There's no verse in the Gospels where Jesus says, I am God, just like that. Where Jesus affirms his deity or divinity, and of the two, by the way, deity is a little stronger word, but where Jesus defends his deity, he says things like Mark chapter 2, he says, uh, I can forgive sin to the man who comes through the, the roof. He says to him, arise, take up your bread and, and walk. And that, you know, and, but first he tells the man, your sins are forgiven. And they're going, ah, only God can do that, right? And Jesus said, so that you know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, arise, take up your bread. And notice he calls himself Son of Man. A lot of times we say Son of God is his divine side and Son of Man is his human side. I think the majority view today is that those are both very lofty titles. Son of God speaks for itself. Son of Man is sometimes used in the Old Testament for a man, sometimes like in the book of Ezekiel almost 100 times for a prophet, and sometimes for this enigmatic figure uh, in Scripture in Daniel chapter 7 where the Son of Man comes from the Ancient of Days, and he sets up God's kingdom. And there, uh, are, there is literature from about the first century that tells you what some Jewish writers of that time thought about Son of Man. And he sits on God's throne, he is worshipped, and there's a term in Daniel 7 that is once or twice is translated worship. And that's not really what the word means. It's, it's taken from the Greek word when the Old Testament is translated into Greek. It's the word latruo, and it means to serve, but in the many, many times it's used in Scripture, it almost always means serve with a purpose of, of worshiping. It's in a worship context. And so it seems like the Son of Man is a very lofty person. And he says, so you know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Arise, take up your bread and walk. He tells a parable in Mark chapter 12 where he's the son and he's going to be killed. Uh, he calls his father Abba, which is a, an Aramaic term. And it's often believed that by critical scholars that when Jesus uses Aramaic, the church preserved those, a lot of those times because they go back to his essential uh, wording. And Abba is not a term that uh, uh, Jewish leaders used for, for God. Uh, and Jesus refers to God that way. It's a, it's a familiar term. Jesus called himself the Son of God. He called himself the Son of Man over and over. In fact, critics like to test Scripture by how many sources they think are behind the Gospels. For example, and they don't count. They don't do it like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that's four. They think that Matthew, Mark, and Luke all used Mark, so that's Mark. Mater um, there's material in Matthew that's nowhere else. There's material in Luke that's nowhere else. There's material that's in Matthew and Luke, but not in Mark. And then there's the Gospel of John. So they know, they look at these as sources. Luke 1, 1 to 4. Luke says, I looked at some sources before I wrote this. Uh, of these five, all five say Jesus is a miracle worker. All five say that he called himself the Son of Man. So these terms that involve deity and great works are there from the beginning.